believe there's a coyote outside. Right outside my tent. Hey buddy, you want to leave me alone? It's going to be a long night. hike so here's the deal it's four o'clock now and the sun sets around here around 6 30. if my orienteering is correct it's about a two hour hike to the actual prison location that gives me about a half an hour of daylight to get everything set up and ready to roll before uh dark hits and then i won't be able to see anything so i gotta make up some good ground and hopefully i can get everything uh, prepared in time for nighttime veteran explorers about some information about this location and how secure it was and everyone kind of gave me some mixed answers like I got from one person I got it was being used as reservists for a training facility and another person gave me oh it has its own private security and another person said oh it's just one crazy farmer who shoots salt slugs at you weirdly enough we're so far north that my biggest fear isn't even getting caught by security or patrol or whatever it's actually bears and mountain lions. Mother Nature scares me more than people do. Every year, a handful of urban explorers tackle the two-hour trek to the abandoned Camp Bison prison. After having driven about five hours north and soon approaching the halfway point of the hike, only one thought was going through my head. I had come too far to get caught now. Right there is a beaver's dam. And if there's a beaver in it, they have sharp ass teeth. So I'm gonna get the mace out. Be very cautious. Sorry, Mr. Beaver. Located in the Wanapite River Valley area, Camp Bison Prison was constructed in 1958, housing up to 850 inmates at any one time. The location was classified as a medium security isolation prison, being accessible only by rail. The prison was entirely self-sufficient, generating its own power and harvesting its own food grown by the inmates themselves in the surrounding fields. The construction of a nearby highway in the 70s caused a new risk of potential prisoner escapes. After the local township couldn't afford to update the facility with the necessary fortification measures to contain the inmates, the prison was closed in 1975 and has sat abandoned ever since. Join me as I investigate what was left behind. 
I'm both nervous and excited to get inside and start exploring. First thing on the agenda will be to find a uh, site to set up camp for the night. This is going to get super creepy at night. I'm guessing these all would have been cells. This was probably a cell block here. Everything echoes really weirdly in here, so it always feels like there's somebody behind you. Although it is dry, I don't think that this is the best location for us to sleep. Looks like more of the same, like another cell block. Looks like somebody had a little fire in here. There's something down this hallway. Please don't be a bear. These on the ground, I believe, I thought they were cigarettes at first, but they're um, actually paint bullets. Like you'd use them as like mock ammunition for uh, like uh, police training and such, or military training. And I believe this is one of the paint capsules that would tip on one of these bullets. So maybe there was some truth to the military or police training here. This looks like it would have been um, like a recreational room. You can see some stalactites forming on the ceiling there. 
just from all the calcium buildup. This looks like an interesting room. Don't know what it would have been for. But there's a little furnace here. This might be a good room to set up camp, but I want to keep looking. Here's one of the cell doors that actually would have kept the inmates in. It's like solid iron. And it looks like there's a latch that's busted, but that would have been like um, a piece where you could look in and see the prisoner from the outside and then close it on them. You can just see how thick these doors would have been. The prison is getting noticeably darker, so I need to find somewhere to camp soon before the sun sets and I'm all out of light. So, looks like they would have had a guard booth here. Maybe this was the cafeteria or visitation. I don't know. The paranoia started to set in. Getting creeped out every now and again. It's only gonna get worse as it gets darker. So I'm just trying to familiarize myself with the area before it does get too dark. Probably gonna head back and set up camp soon. All the water coming down off of that. That's what the original flooring would have looked like before it got torn up. So this would have been like the stage here. It's bellowed now. With daylight fading, I decided to head back to the cafeteria and set up my camp there. What I initially thought to be the safest location to sleep in would later prove to be my worst nightmare.
As the sun set, I began to realize my situation. I was located in a dead zone, several hundred kilometers away from any sort of civilization, and without a means to call for help if any emergency did arise, I truly would be on my own. So I thought, why not have some fun? We're gonna leave camp. I wanna see if I can show you guys <clears throat> or find an area that I didn't see well during the day. So we're gonna go try and find the boiler rooms. This is so much creepier at night. I think we have to go upstairs either way. So I think we gotta go down the stairs over here or up the stairs. Headlamp was causing some issues with the camera, so now we have a little less light. But I think we'll be okay. Okay, so that was the east stairwell, so we have to go west. Just listen to the rain. I think the basement should have the boilers. We shall see. Or this could just be a creepy basement. I was going to go to yes. There's a light that used to be hanging on the ceiling. I wonder why there's all this caging around this area. What these would have been used for. I think it might be through here. Oh, look at that.
Oh. Uh, first step is the Lulu. Well, I found the boiler room. Now it's just a matter of getting down there. sort of tunnel system. I wonder where it goes. Oh. <laughs> now this is creepy. Definitely gonna have to change socks tomorrow. Oh, this is the piping from underneath the whole prison. Oh, it's getting super deep here. Like my feet are fully submerged. too deep in here because everything is soaked. But this is really cool. Let's hope I remember how to get out of here. actually under the prison right now. I thought I just heard something from over there. That might be our cue to return back to where we came. After I had my fill of fun exploring the catacombs of the service tunnels underneath the prison, it was time to head back to camp and check in for the night. Or so I thought. This is when my luck quickly began to run out. There's something at the end of the hallway that keeps making noise. room at the end. Maybe it's just my imagination. Oh, what a beautiful sight to behold. <laughs> my crappy tent. <laughs> I can't wait to just put on some dry socks and go to bed. It's been
been a long day. I'm in my tent and I keep hearing. I keep hearing something outside. Sounds like it's in the corridor. One of the corridors. Maybe an animal, I don't know. Of course now it's Did you hear that? Alright guys, I'm, I'm finally going to head to bed. It's about 1.30 in the morning. And uh, it's gotten down to about 0 degrees, so it's rather chilly. But luckily this sleeping bag is actually pretty good. So I'm fairly warm. And hopefully I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> And this place makes so much noise, like when you can't discern raindrops from wind, from animals, from scratches, from whatever, <laughs> it messes with your mind, man. It's so hard to sleep here. But I'm gonna try. It's really late and I'm really tired. Hey buddy, you want to leave me alone? It's going to be a long night. <laughs> I just want to go to sleep. Go away! Go away!
I'm sorry, just enjoying a quick breakfast. So we made it through the night. <clears throat> In case any of you are wondering, yes, the night sucked. Um, essentially what happened is it dropped below freezing. Everything is covered in a layer of ice. It was really hard for me to keep warm. Thank God I had a pair of hot pockets that I forgot about. This place during the day, no problem, piece of cake. From dusk till dawn, it's on a whole nother level, man. As soon as I tried going to bed, I heard like, it sounded like human footsteps, like just like scraping across the floor. But it turned out to be uh, just a pack of coyotes. So that was pretty, uh, pretty sweet. They were like stalking me. And then it, after a little while, I heard them cackling. And then I realized it was uh, some, it sounded like a jackal or coyote. I'll just use coyote for ease of term. But um, yeah, they started circling. And I was, I was in the tent in the cafeteria and they started circling the tent. And they just kept circling. And they kept getting closer and closer. So then I was like, all right, I've had enough of this. So I grabbed my knife and I barged out the front door and I kind of like fended them off. I started yelling at them and scared them away. And then five minutes later, they were circling again, circling around the tent. So then I scared them off again. And every time this happened, like maybe one or two more times. And every time they'd come back, they'd get more and more bold and they get more and more close, which I definitely did not like being alone. It just added like a whole another level of fear for it for me unfortunately I didn't get a lot of this on camera because I was just uh, trying to stay safe at the time because this was like the first time I actually felt like I was in danger um, and then as soon as they started rubbing up against my tent that's when I, I called it so I scared them off one last time I packed up my things and I ran I ran um, pretty much threw everything in like a bindle in the tent and I ran up the stairs and uh, lost the coyotes and uh, thankfully made it up to the roof, barricaded the, the roof door so that they couldn't get up, which luckily held them off for the whole night. But then as soon as I got my camp set up here, I heard them on the second story. They were looking for me. They were walking up and down the hallways trying to find me and I was trying to keep so quiet not to alert them or anything like that. I was exhausted. It was like 3 a.m. at this point, 4 a.m. maybe. And uh, my stomach, because I hadn't, hadn't eaten pretty much anything, my stomach started grumbling. And just then I started hearing growling, like vicious growling. And that's when I knew they were not there to be friendly. And it, the growling sounded like it was coming from a foot behind my head. So I grabbed my knife, grabbed a flashlight, bust out the tent again, and I realized that the, the coyote is directly beneath me on the second story, growling up at me trying to figure out where I am so I spent pretty much the next hour or so awake listening to them stalking me in the hallway and I don't know if you guys have ever been hunted before but it kind of sucks so it was kind of scary I was I was honestly terrified that they'd break through my barricade and they'd that was it because I mean I'm alone out here there is no service there's no no cell reception no nothing if they one bad bite I'm at least a two hour hike to the car. And from the car, I'm about like a three hour drive from, well, maybe a one hour drive from civilization. So if something goes wrong out here, that's it. And I believe honestly, my decision to uh, move up on from the cafeteria to the roof was, uh, is the reason why I'm still here right now. But anyways, enough of the serious stuff. Let me show you the, uh, show you the campsite. This is the tent right here. And as you can see, it's on top of the prison roof, sun's starting to come up, it's actually looking to be a beautiful sunrise. <laughs> 